Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video where we are going to learn the complete song Altitudes by Jason Becker. Here we go. Sister, yes. Get used to that. It's my cat. All right, like in the perpetual barn. All right, like in the perpetual barn lesson, here is a complete note for note lesson of altitudes. The way how I covered it and how I played it. I tried to, like in the perpetual barn cover, to figure out how other people are playing it and trying to find what my own kind of way or how I would imagine how Jason would play it. So I came up with my own version of altitudes and here is a lesson note for note to show you guys how you can play Altitudes by Jason Becker. Finally, one note for note lesson here on YouTube. Everything for free. If you want the free tabs for this video, then go and check out the description box. There's the link where you can download the tabs, the complete song, In My Way, and how I played it. All right, before we're heading on to the lesson, we're going to check out the comment section here, my little section where I'm going to pick out two comments, I'm going to react to them. And this is just a little thank you for all of you guys and all the people who are following me and the community, which is growing day for day here on this channel. All right, so let's pick out two questions and then we're starting with the lesson. Okay, here's a comment from Hotel Trivago. Why, uh, I don't know, but you are making us hungry for a full lesson, you legend. Well, well, you guys are the legends out there because you will help me to, and you will help this channel and this community to grow and so I can do this more and more and more videos more often and this is a big dream for me coming true. So thank you, thank you to Hotel Trivago. Here is one from my good friend Paul King. Cheers to you, Paul King. Great video as always, man. I gotta tell you, your videos are always ch always challenge me every single time when you post a video. As Arnold says, repetition, repetition, and I'll get a better ever and I get better over time. Love your channel, PS. I hope you're doing okay. Stay safe. Well, this is from my top five mindsets for musician videos. Thank you very much for this awesome comment. It's really great to see that my videos are a challenge for you because you are an awesome player. And I, this is this is the thing that I love to get challenged and challenge you guys. And yeah, and I have to add, I know I said in my top five mindsets for musician video that Arnie is, was the governor of Florida, but I know he's a, he was the governor of California. Thank you everybody who's liking my videos, subscribing to this channel and writing a comment down. If you want to get shout outed in this comment section, then feel free to write a comment. It's that easy. Okay, so much for that. Let's start. Let's go into altitudes. Here we go. Cheers. All right, let's start with the intro. First of all, most of the time in the song we are in the B minor scale. Well, sometimes we're going to F sharp minor, sometimes we're going to C sharp minor, but here most of the time we are in B minor. And we're starting this song with a little bit of phrasing, a little bit of melody, and the first section goes like this. Up to that point. Okay, first we are sliding into the 11th fret of the G string, the F sharp, the fifth of the B minor chord, which is the first chord that the keyboard is playing here. All right, we're sliding to the 11th fret, and then we are bending from the 14th fret to the 15th fret on the B string. Then we're going to the 11th fret on the B string, the major 7 in B minor, and we are bending it up to the B, to our root note. After that... We're resolving to the 11th fret and playing 11, 12, 14. Now bending from the 14th fret to the 17th fret. One and a half steps. And here Marty, uh, sorry, Martin, not Marty, the other one. 
Jason is doing a huge vibrato on that. And he's doing it immediately. So you don't take some time to let the note breathe and then start the, vibra the vibrato. He starts immediately with the vibrato. So not like that. More like that. Resolving to the 14th fret, and now comes the first little bit faster line. Oops, sorry. First, we're starting with an F sharp major arpeggio. Playing 16, 15, 14 on the D, the G, and the B string. Playing it first ascending, and then again descending. Then we're playing 17, 15 on the B string and doing a little thrill on the 14th and the 15th fret on the B string. And we're going, oh sorry, we're going to the 14th and 15th fret on the E string doing the thrill there. Then we're playing again 17, 14, 15, 14 on the B string. Again, the uh, 16th fret on the G string. Sorry, not the 16th fret, the 17th fret. And sliding to the 11th fret on the G string. Ah, sorry. It's not that easy to get the 11th fret here right. Sometimes the little details are really, really hard in this song. All right, let's play this first line again. Then we are nearly repeating the same line. Just with a little bit of a difference in the rhythm when we are going to 11th fret and when we are bending the 11th fret to the 12th fret. We are playing it more like we're bending to the note and going down to the note, bending to the note, a little bit more bluesy in this kind of way. And then bending it to the for this fret. Ah, sorry. Again, 11, 12, 14. Again, from the 14th to the 17th fret. Now from the 17th to the 19th fret. And now we're playing this kind of Ingvi inspired melody. where we are playing 19, 20, 19, 17 on the B string, going to the G string where we're playing 19, 18, 16, 15. Now comes another really, really slinky kind of speedy line. And here I'm improvising a little bit, but there are some certain key elements which are important to get the sound, which is Jay or what Jason is doing here, because Jason is playing this really slinky and it's not that easy to figure out the right way how uh, Jason is playing this. So I decided myself, let's check out more of the key elements of this phrase and let's build around that key um, that key and let's build around those key elements some own version of it a little improvisation and the key elements here are first a b minor arpeggio from the starting of the g string 16th fret 15th fret on the b string and 14th fret on the e string all sweeped then we are playing 17, 15, 14 on the E string. Doing a little thrill between 14 and 15 on the E string. Playing 17, 15, 14 on the B string. Going back high on the E string, doing another thrill. This is a really important key element to go down to the B string and then again high to the E string. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes I switch between uh, what I what I like to do as well is I switch between the B and the E string before going straight to the B string here then I'm playing again that F sharp major page here descending and creating a line which resolves into the B here on the 14th fret on the D string. Uh, sorry, the A string of the 7th string, so it's the A string. Alright, so again, the key elements are the B minor page, the thrills between the E and the B string, then the um, F sharp major page, and a line resolving into the D. So, for example, something like. So much for the second speedy line. Now we are going to the um, second part of the intro and that goes like this. Okay, I had to rearrange some certain lines here because I don't use a whammy bar. Well, I have a tremolo system here on this beautiful Ibanez Universe, but I'm not really using it because I never used a tremolo system before, a vibrato system before. I'm not really good at it. I'm not skilled at it. It's like when you have driven all of your life an automatic car and now you have to shift to a manual car. And this is not really easy. So I had to rearrange this a little bit to get some certain effects like Jason, but still without using the tremolo system. Okay, my cat is hungry as it seems. Süßer. Ja, ich mach gleich wieder. Ja, was ist denn los, Kleiner? Okay, but let's check out the second part of the intro. First we have this kind of ascending motif and theme which goes like this. We're starting on the 11th fret of the G string, going to the 14th fret, bending to the 15th fret, variating a little bit with a bend and release, going to the 12th fret on the G string after we've played again the 11th fret, bending from the 15th to the 17th fret, going from the 12th fret to the 15th fret, the major 7 or the major 3rd of the dominant chord here, going to the 17th fret on the e, uh, B string and bending to the 19th fret. And now we are taking the same note from the 19th fret on the B string but we're playing it on the E string, which is here on the 14th fret of the E string. And we're playing this kind of idea. Now Jason here is using the whammy bar, the tremolo, to get the 15th fret on the E string to bend that note sharpener. But we don't have the, or I'm not using this, so I have to bend this note with my finger. And then we are playing some kind of Holdsworth inspired legato lick uh, between the 15th, 14th and 12th fret on the E string, going to the B string and up again to the 15th fret on the E string. And we're repeating this. Twice. At this time when we have reached the uh, 15th fret, uh, the 12th fret on the B string, we are not going up again to the E string. We are now playing the uh, 14th fret, the 12th fret and the 11th fret on the G string and the 14th fret, the 12th fret and the 11th fret on the D string. But 
we're not playing it just with pull-offs. We are continuing this kind of idea and this kind of legato motif. <laughs> It's again like the second speedy lick on the first part of the intro, a little bit improvised and I was more checking out the key elements here and then I'm resolving into the 11th fret of the G string again. So. It's more important to get the 11th fret on the G string, that note on the one of the next bar. What you're doing in between that, feel free to improvise here a little bit. Then we are repeating that ascending bending theme here. But now we are playing also with our pinky, the 14th fret on the E string, while we are bending with the ring finger, middle finger and index finger, the 14th fret on the B string. This kind of bluesy idea. And the rest is the same. Now we're playing again 11, 12 and 14 on the B string. And it sounds like here where I'm using a bending, Jason is doing another band with a tremolo bar. And here I have to use my fingers again. After that we're playing 12, 14 on the G str uh, B string. And now we have to bend from the 14th fret B string up to the, oh, even higher, up to the 18th fret on the B string. One major third bending. Then we are playing those two notes separately, 14th and 18th fret. I'm resolving into the 19th fret of the B string. And this is the intro section of the song. Let's continue with the first clean solo. Okay, the clean solo goes like this. So we're starting in the 9th fret of the D string, then we're bending from the 7th fret uh, B string to the 8th fret B string with our index finger. Then we're doing this chromatic approach from the 8th fret to the 9th fret, resolving to the 9th fret on the G string, playing 7, 6, 7 on the G string, 9, and bending from the 6th fret B string to the 7th fret B string. This is really Marty Friedman kindish. I could imagine you learned that kind of idea from Marty. Especially this part sounds sometimes really Japanese kind of style, so it's a lot of Marty influence here for sure. Okay, let's continue. We are playing 12, 11, 12 on the B string. Then we're going 11, 12 on the uh, G string doing a little hammer on and pull off between the 11th and 12th fret. Playing this part of a B minor. 12 on the D string, 11 on the G, uh, G string, yes, and 12 on the B string, and again 11 on the G string. Then we are switching here from the index finger to the middle finger because we need our index finger to play the 10th fret on the E string. And we're playing the 14th fret on the E string and sliding into the 17th fret of the E string. Ah. Now we're doing this quick pull off, this really Japanese kind of sounding phrasing idea, resolving into the 15th fret of the G str uh, B string, bending from the 14th fret B string to the 15th fret B string and releasing it again. Mm -hmm. 
Then we're doing this one twice again. So we have this kind of phrasing idea. Going to the 12th fret on the B string, 12th fret on the G string, and 11th fret on the G string. So. The first time I bend from the 14th fret to the 15th fret here on the B string, I do a little rake before. Now we have to bend the 11th fret on the D string to the 12th fret. I would recommend to use the ring finger here because we have to switch after that to the 7th position. And here we are a bit closer to the 7th position instead of when we are using our index finger. Now we have this really cool line. Again, really Eastern kind of sounding line. We're first doing a little phrase between the 9th and the 7th fret on the E string. Playing the 9th fret and then doing a hem on a pull of playing between the 7th and the 9th fret. Playing 8-7 uh, on the B string. And then 10, 9, 7 on the G string. Having the really cool flat 5 in here as well with the 10th fret. Now we need to play a double stop. It's really quiet but you can hear it in the recording and I think this is from the phrasing kind of point of view also really important. We are playing a double stop on the 7th fret between the G and the B string. And we're playing 9th fret D string, 7th fret the G string and hammering to the 9th fret on the G string. Playing 7-6-7 seven, seven on the G string. Again 9 and doing again this little trick, this Marty Friedman trick here from the 6th fret B string to the 7th fret. After that we are hammering from the 7th fret on the B string to the 8th fret and bending from the G string 9th fret to the 11th fret which is the same note like the 7th fret on the B string. So we are doing this kind of melod melodic idea. But we are not playing the last one note with the just normal 7th fret on the B string. We are bending to that note from the, 11, from the 9th fret on the G string. And then we are uh, release the bend and pulling between the 7th and the 9th fret. Going back to the 9th fret. So again. Then we are doing from the rhythmical idea the same idea like on this phrase on the E string but this time on the G string. But again as well uh, between the 7th and the 9th fret. So we have one long note and then the really fast thrill after, after that. After that we're going from our index finger from the 7th fret to the 6th fret, going middle finger 7th fret, then yes, catty line, yes, Mowgli. Then we're playing, no cat, alright cat, then we're playing 9, 7, 6 on the G string, and playing 7, 7 on the D and on the A string, using our roll technique here. Sliding here with our ring finger after we have, uh, sorry, with our middle finger after we have rolled from the D to the A string, the fifth fret, playing five four on the A string, uh, sorry on the A string, not on the D string, and then the fifth fret on the E string. So we have one two three four one two three four, and then that line. And I've played this line wrong in my cover. I have played starting here on the 7th fret with my pinky and outlining that B minor here but actually we are starting on the 5th fret of the A string and playing with our middle finger we're coming from the 5th fret E string resolving in the best case with our row technique to the 8th uh, string 5th fret to the 8th string 5th fret then we are playing again with the row technique 
fourth on the D and on the G string. Now we're playing six on the G and bending to the seventh fret on the G string. And we're playing six four six. 7, 6, and now we are not going back to the 7th fret, we are playing this harmony here. Outlining the B minor chord. 12 and 11 on the D and G string, 11 and 12 on the G and B string, both with our index finger and our middle finger, and again with the middle and the index finger, 12 and 10 on the B and on the E string. And this is the complete clean intro, the complete first clean solo. Let me play this one again. favorite sections of this song. Here we go, let's check out the sweep section. Okay, but for the sweep section I will teach you now only the first run before the sweep section and the two runs after the sweep section. Why? Because I've made a lesson about the sweep section already one year ago on January uh, 2019. So click on the information card here to see my sweep lesson or my lesson about the sweep arpeggios from Altitudes which I already did, so why talking about here again when you just check out this video? So click here. All right, but the run where we're going into the sweeping section goes like this. Now we are again in B minor and we are playing a three note per string scale. Seven, nine, ten. Playing this kind of Paul Gilbert idea. I love to name this kind of idea. Where we're going to the seventh fret on the A string and back, playing descending the B minor scale. And we're playing seven, nine, ten on the E and on the A string. Then we're playing again the seventh fret on the D string. Playing again descending, but we are not playing descending to the 7th fret on the A string, we are only playing to the 9th fret and then we are playing of those 4 notes from the 10th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret to the 10th fret on the E string. And then resolving through, um, and then resolving via the 9th fret on the E string to the 7th fret on the E string. <laughs> and we are harmonizing this one as well, one third higher, so we have... The same sequence, the same idea, just only starting on the 10th fret and playing 10, 12, 14 on the E and on the A string and 11 on the D string. So and then comes the complete sweep section for you guys, no I won't teach that, but at least I could play it real quickly, shall we? Okay, let's check this one out. Now after the complete sweep section we have two runs. The first run is this one here. The sequence here is really uncommon for us guitar player, but it's not that hard to get this one under the finger. We are starting with the Nupa string on the A string, 14, 15, 16. Doing hammer on pull off between the 14th and the 16th fret on the D string. 
and we're playing again 17th fret on the A string and playing those four notes high to the 17th fret on the D string. Then we are hammering again between uh, the 14th and the 16th fret on the G string. Here we have to change our fingering a little bit because we want to play 14, 16, 18. So we need to take the middle finger for the 16th fret and then when we're going back to the 17th fret on the A string in this sequence, uh, sorry, the 17th fret on the D string in this sequence, we have to use our ring finger. And we're doing another hammer on pull off between the 15th and the 17th fret on the B string. Playing with our ring finger again the 18th fret on the G string. And resolving through the 19th fret on the B string into the 20th fret on the B string. So again we have... Sorry. And then we have the second shred line here, the second run, and this one goes like this. This one is actually a seven note phrase. We have as a sequence one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we are starting on the A string with the six note phrase kind of. We're taking this idea, but we are leaving out the first note. So we have six notes. And we are starting on the sixth fret on the A string and playing 16, 17, 16, 14, 16, 17. There, those are our six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we are continuing through the scale by playing it as a seven note phrase. So instead of starting with the 16 note now on the D string, uh, the, the sixth fret on the D string, we are starting on the 14th fret on the D string and playing this kind of seven note idea. We are playing up and down, up and down until we reach the seventh note. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Going to the B string, one, five, six, seven. Now on the B string, we are continuing horizontally playing. 17, 19, 20, 19, 20, 22. Going to the E string where we are playing 17, 19, 21, and resolving into the 20 seconds fret. So and those were the two shred lines in the end of the sweep section. And after this, we are playing a little transition, which leads us to the big first solo from Jason here. But the transition to the solo goes like this. So we are starting like the transition to the arpeggio section with this kind of idea. Continuing this kind of phrase from the D string, 7, 9, 11, going on to the G string, and now we're playing up to the B string, and after we've reached the, uh, the 12th fret on the B string, we are just playing the scale descending, but in a different scale position. Because we are playing this one note twice, once on the 8th fret on the B string, and once on the 12th fret on the G string. Sorry. and resolving here into the big solo. So let me try to play this one fast. Going to the big solo section, the first big solo section, which is really, really a lot of fun. So let's check out this one. Okay, the solo section starts with a really, really awesome line. The line goes like this. I love this line. This line is a real brain fuck. It's really complex, but it sounds so cool, so 
Eastern Japanese kind of sound again here and I love it. Basically a combination of the pentatonic scale with the second in it and the um, sharp six in it instead of the seven. This kind of typical Asian Eastern sounding pentatonic. But with some really really cool tricks and jumps here and there. So let's check out this line. So we're starting with this big stretch between the 7th and the 11th fret on the G string. Then we're doing a little string skip to the 7th fret on the E string. Pulling back again from the 11th fret G string to the 7th fret G string. Then we have to do a little finger position shift because we want to play the 11th fret on the D string with our ring finger and the 9th fret on the D string with our index finger. After that we're going back again to the G string, again with a big stretch. Playing again this close position here on the 11th and the 9th fret on the D string. Playing only the 11th fret on the G string. Back again to the 11th and the 9th fret on the D string. Playing the um, 10th fret on the A string. Going back again higher on the 7th and the 9th fret. Uh, sorry, the 9th and the 11th fret on the D string. Playing again only the 11th fret on the G string. Back again, but this time we're resolving into the 9th fret of the A string. So again, let me recap this. Then we're again playing 11, 9, 10, going back again to 9 on the D string, 11, and then we're resolving into the 9th right again on the A string. Playing 10, 9 on the E string, going back to the A string, and resolving into the 7th fret of the E string. try to play this one up to tempo. Now we're doing a little bit of speed picking here uh, and we have a lot of uneven number of notes now in the next section so we need to focus a little bit on our pick sounding here. First we are playing this again this Paul Gilbert kind of lick. Here on the low E string, second fret, well, second fret, playing two, three, five, two on the E string, back to the E string. And we are playing a run from the E string to the G string. Here we have to change the pick slanting from strings to, uh, from string to string. So we need upward, downward, upward, downward. This is a really fun line to play fast. Now we are playing a descending three note per string scale here. And we're jumping to the next position, playing again three notes descending, uh, three, three strings descending. Going back again to the G string after we have hit the A string. Playing to the E string here. So let me recap this. Okay, with the first line. section which goes in slow like this. And up the tempo. Ok, 
Okay, and here we are starting uh, with this, again, this Paul Gilbert kind of idea. <laughs> Like this kind of interlude between the um, arpeggio section and the big solo. We are playing this one from the E string to the G string. Then we're staying on the D and on the G string and going to the 11th fret. And playing it here up to the E string. When we have reached the B and the E string, we are playing this one twice. And resolving through the 14th fret on the E string into the 15th fret on the E string. Then we are playing just simple 6 note per string phrase. From the E to the E string and after that we're doing an E B minor sweep arpeggio the little triller between the 10th and the 14th fret in the beginning. We are expanding it a little bit. That's this classical kind of sweeper patch here. 12 on the B string, 11 on the G, 12 D, 14 A, and then we play with our index 7 A, playing with the middle finger 10 E, and sliding to 7. So again we have Let me try to play the solo in one take up to tempo. After that, we are going to this kind of slow mid solo, and we're going to check it out right now. Here you go. So, the slow solo in the middle of the song goes like this. Okay, and here we have two sections. The first section goes like this. Starting off with a bending from the 4th fret on the D string to the 5th fret. And we're doing a little drill between the 4th and the 5th fret on the D string. Resolving into the 7th fret on the A string with our pinky. Then we're playing 5, 4, 5, 7, 5, 4, 5. Five, four, five, a little bit faster. And then still on 16 notes we are playing seven, five, four, and then as triplet, four, six, seven, resolving into nine. Playing six, seven, doing a little hammer and pull off here, to the fourth fret with a slide. Two bands and release on the 6th fret on the G string, and resolving again to the 4th fret on the G string. Let me try to play this one again. Then we are starting again on this note, and doing, uh, now we are on the second part by the way, and now we are playing a little scale run. Here on the G and on the B string, starting on the 11th fret, 11, 12, 14, 12, 14, 15, resolving into the 12th fret on the B string again, playing after we have played the 15th fret on the B string twice, going to this line, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 14, 11, then we are bending from the 17th fret to the 19th fret on the E string, Release, 15, 14, 15, 14, 17, 14, 17, and, I'm sorry, 
playing again the 15th fret on the B string. And resolving into the B on the G string. 16th fret on the G string. And now we are going to the slow arpeggio section. Let's check out the slow arpeggio section. Okay, now here he is playing some arpeggios, which I covered, and he's also doing some tapping stuff. But I want to focus here on the arpeggios, because I really like those, and I think it's a really pretty cool idea, a pretty neat idea, which you can transform into your own playing and do some licks out of this as well. Okay, we're starting with B minor, but we're starting with B minor 11 here, so we have the E as a top note. And the pattern is always... One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. <laughs> four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, after we're playing the uh, E minor 11, here 12, 10, 12, 11 on the G and on the B string, we're playing a regular in B minor. Going to get back to the B minor 11. And now we're playing B minor at 9. Luckily, this section is a bit slower, so we can jump between here the 10th fret and 9th fret with our middle finger and index, and the 12th fret and 11th fret with the middle finger and index on the B and on the G string. So let me play this section again. And this is also a pretty cool idea, as I've said in the beginning, to play this one fast, up to tempo, or even faster for own links and stuff like that. Uh, after we are playing this B minor 9, we're playing again the regular B minor. But after the first six note, we are going one um, inversion higher. Then we're going to play G major, we're going one inversion higher. Back to the normal inversion. Now we're playing Aces 4. Resolving into A major. Playing E diminished. Here it's the first time where we are breaking up this kind of rhythmical idea and playing six notes. Or we're playing more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes and sliding to the uh, inversion down below. I'm playing one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six. So after that, we are playing uh, B minor again. Then this pretty nasty and this pretty ugly. <laughs> where we are still having the F sharp here and the B and the um, F sharp here on the B and on the G string, but we also have the E here on the E string, so we have to use now the roll technique with the middle finger. I don't know, when we're playing it fast, it kind of worked. Sounds like the arpeggio from the legendary intro of the Dragon Ball Z theme. Chala, chala. But playing this one slow and in combination with the B minor, with the regular B minor, this is pretty ugly. Then we're playing F diminished. Playing it three inversions higher. Then we're playing A major. One inversion higher. And another inversion lower, not higher, sorry. Inversion lower, inversion lower. Then we are playing the last diminished arpeggio. And here four we are playing first, we are an E diminished. Here we are playing five notes of the diminished arpeggio. Sliding to the next inversion, playing five notes. Sliding to the next inversion. And playing four notes. And then we are playing full uh, diminished arpeggio, the di full diminished sweep arpeggio, starting here on the 15th fret, 15, 12, 14, 15, 12, sliding to 9, playing 
11, 13 on the A string and here for I recommend this finger shape, index, middle finger. So we can use the index as a hammer on a pull off kind of figure here on the 10th fret on the A string. Playing the diminished shape A sending and going to the, I think it's the Friedman solo. I think it's played by Marty Friedman, but we're going now to the next section and you will see which one this is right now. Okay, now the next solo goes like this. <laughs> it's a really fun solo with a lot of bending stuff in there and we're starting the 7th fret of the B string and bending to the 9th fret. After we've bended to the 7th fret, we're playing 7-5. Then we're going back again to the 7th fret, playing two bands and release. Starting to the 9th fret and doing another full bend. And resolving into the 7th fret, but I think in my cover I resolved into the 9th fret, but for me, now in retrospective, the 7th fret sounds a little bit better. And we're playing this line. So we're first starting with the 7th fret on the B string. Going to the 6th fret on the G string. Bending it, playing 6-5 on the G string, 6-4, sorry. Going to the 6th fret on the D string. Going back again to the 5th fret, a uh, 4th fret on the G string, 6th fret on the G string and doing another double bend and release. Then we're doing a little bit faster with a pull off. Going from the 6th fret to the 4th fret, to the 6th fret, to the 4th fret on the G and on the D string resolving to the 6th fret on the A string. So again we have... Then we have this kind of gun. We were starting on the 6th fret on the D string playing 6... Sorry, yeah, 6th fret on the A string playing 6, 4th fret on the D string and then again 6, 4, 6 on the D string 4, 6, sliding to 8, 7 B string, 9, 7 E string, 9 B string, 7 E string, 9 and sliding to the 14th fret on the E string where you're doing a full bend. So again. Playing 14, 11, 14. Playing 12, 11. Going to the 19th fret where we're doing a full band. Playing 19, 18, 16 and then we're playing this kind of ascending idea. We're playing 16, 18, 19 with our ring finger at 21, bending to 23rd. And with the pinky now, while we are bending, we are playing one fret higher. This is this kind of traditional Steve Lukather bending. I love this kind of bend idea, but here on the higher frets, with a little bit of stomach here in between, it's not that easy. And going back again to the bending where we're doing a really nice wild, Zach Wildish kind of rebuttal. And going to the final solo of Altitudes. Let's go. All right, the final solo goes like this in slow. We are starting with this really cool smooth line here. This F sharp minor arpeggio. some really interesting I would say position shifts in there. Here a 
and we're going from the 9th, 11th fret on the G string to the 7th and the 6th fret. And then the same thing, just an octave lower on the A string. And here from the index finger to our pinky, so we can play the 6th fret with our index finger. After that we have this really cool legato session here. Then we're playing the fifths here, on the interval of the fifths from the fourth fret on the G string, which is the seventh fret on the B string. And we're bending it one fret higher. And three frets higher. So one, down and now one minor third as a bend. Playing 12 ten, ten. And now we are doing this A major back here. 9 10, 9 12, 9 10, 9 11. And now descending, uh, sorry, ascending 12, 9 10, uh, 12, 12, 11, 9 10. 9, 12, and going to the next position, but in the next inversion we are going in a higher um, subdivision, which are 16 note triplets, and here we are playing this kind of idea. Then we are going to A7, A dominant, and after we have played as a 16 note triplet, from the 7th to the 7th, so from the 15th fret on the E string to the 12th fret on the G string via the uh, A dominant 7. We are going to play this line. Resolving into the 9th fret of the A string. And now we are doing a little bit of speed picking shreddy idea here again. We're first playing ascending and descending 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, 12 on the A and on the D string. Going to the G string, we're playing this kind of double note, kind of ear, this kind of idea. Then we're playing uh, or continuing ascending. Playing again this kind of double idea here on the E string. Now we're doing another position shift, like um, the one time where, where we had this kind of um, same idea, but I can't remember right now where. But we have a position shift where we're going to play the same notes but in a different position. And from here on, we're playing first descending. And to the to the D string and then again A string. So we have something like this. Then we're playing F diminished, resolving into A major, playing this kind of sweep arpeggio. First, uh, let me play this one slow. And then we are ending the solo with another really cool diminished idea. Where we're just moving around uh, different diminished inversions. Where we're first going down the inversion from E diminished, going back and then up and playing two times the inversion up here. And ending the solo with that. Now comes another big shreddy kind of idea in 7-8 and we have this idea. And playing the same idea one minor third higher. Going to the final section of altitudes, the last melody section. Let's check this one out. Here we go. Okay, the melody goes like this. 11 on the G string, going to the B string 12. Bending one fret higher. 
playing the 14th fret on the E string. Going with the band, release and pull off to the 12th uh, fret again. Going from the 11th fret to the 14th fret on the G string. And resolving into the 12th fret. The second section goes like this. Then you're playing 9, 11, 12, 12 on the B string, 12, 11, 9 on the G string, uh, 10 on the B string, 9 on the G string, and resolving into 11 on the G string. Now we're taking the same thing and putting it somewhere else. Here. Starting on the 17th fret on the G string, but the idea stays the same with some slightly variations in there, like this one. Or you can add your own variations, like this. And we're going back, playing the same melody like in the beginning. Now we are ending a little with a cut. And here Jason is doing some shreddy stuff. In B minor scale, you know, per string stuff. I am improvised this one in my solo and I think it's totally fine to improvise here as well. Something not per string stuff. As long as we are playing the last as long as we are playing the last three notes, 12, 11, 10 on the G string. Which is the last note of Altitudes. Whew. What a journey, what a journey. This is the complete song Altitudes by Jason Becker. I hope you like this little lesson here, this little video I made for you guys. I can't wait to see some covers of you. There are some people responding to my Perpetual Burn video and giving me covers or sending me covers from them, playing them. This is really awesome. So feel free to learn Altitudes and believe in yourself. You can play this as well and you can play this too. And feel free to cover it and to show it to me and to send it to me and stuff like this. So if you like this video, then as always, feel free to subscribe, to hit the like button uh, or to leave a comment if you want to get shout outed. So much for that. So now it's time to get back into the practice cave and preparing for the next cool challenge, for the next cool video and something really special um, with Jason Becker, which I hope I will get done in two weeks. It's a great challenge for me. So guys, see you there. I'm hoping I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers and stay progress. Bye.